Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the 6th chapter of grade 9, the plate tectonic theory. This is the 4th session of this chapter. In this session, we are going to learn in detail about theory of plate tectonics. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. List the main postulates of the plate tectonic theory. Explain plate boundaries diagrammatically. Describe movements at any four major plate boundaries on the earth. List at least six facts supporting the plate tectonic theory. List the names of all major plates making up the earth's crust. But before we begin our exploration about the theory of plate tectonics, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same. First, the plate boundaries lie along with the boundaries of the continents. Second, there are only 12 tectonic plates which cover 7 continents and 5 oceans. Most plates either carry an ocean or a continent. Earth's crust lie on the mantle. Well, all these are myths. Let us explore the facts. Wagoner's hypothesis of continental drift was very convincing in itself, but was not accepted due to its inability to explain the mechanism that was drifting such huge continents. When sea floor spreading came along, scientists recognized that the mechanism to explain drifting continents had been found. If we merge the ideas of continental drift and seafloor spreading, we can form it into a new all-encompassing idea, the theory of plate tectonics. By combining the ideas of both these theories, we can say that Earth's crust is not one single solid piece of rock. Instead, Earth's crust is broken into pieces and these pieces are called tectonic plates. These plates differ in size and thickness. They are divided into basically two types. The continental plate and the oceanic plate. The continental plate carries the continents over it while the oceanic plate carry oceans over it. These plates move over a thin and slippery layer called the asthenosphere. When gases try to escape from the mantle as a result of the cooling of the earth from outside in, they were eventually trapped beneath the crust, where on account of their kinetic energy, they cause the lower part of the crust to melt. Consequently, a very thin layer was created at the moho, which is called the asthenosphere. When P waves enter the asthenosphere, their velocity temporarily drops, which is why some geologists also call the asthenosphere LVZ, that is low velocity zone. It is because of this slippery surface of the asthenosphere that plates are able to slide. 
We know that sea floor spreading moves the lithospheric plates around the earth's surface. But what drives sea floor spreading? The answer is convectional currents in mantle. At this point, it would help to think of a convectional cell as a rectangle or oval. Each side of the rectangle is a limb of the cell. The convectional cell is located in the mantle. The base is deep in the mantle and the top is near the crust. There is a limb of mantle material moving on one side of the rectangle, one limb moving horizontally across the top of the rectangle, one limb moving downwards on the other side of the rectangle and the final limb moving horizontally to where the material begin to move upward again. Now picture these convectional cells side by side. As you can notice in the diagram, the rising limbs of material from the two adjacent cells reach the base of the crust at the mid-oceanic ridge. Some of the hot magma melts and creates new ocean crust. Thus, seafloor moves of the axis of the mid-oceanic ridge in both directions when still newer seafloor erupts. The oceanic plate moves outward due to the eruption of new oceanic crust at the mid-oceanic ridge. At the other hand, two plates push against each other and the heavier plate subsides under the lighter plate. This region is known as subduction zone. The constant rubbing of plates against each other causes the eruption of magma over the thinner plate. Sometimes this magma may pile up over the surface of the ocean to form islands. Back at the planet's surface, the edges where two plates meet are known as plate boundaries. Most geologic activity, including volcanoes, earthquakes and mountain building, take place at plate boundaries where two enormous pieces of solid lithosphere interact. Think about two cars moving around a parking lot. In what three ways can those cars move relative to each other? They can move away from each other, they can move towards each other, or they can slide past each other. These three types of relative motion also define the three types of plate boundaries. According to plate plate tectonics, it is clear that the continents are not moving. Instead, these lithospheric plate, the pieces of Earth's crust, are moving. They are floating on asthenosphere. The lithosphere is made up of around 20 big plates which move relative to each other in the three ways mentioned earlier. Let's look at a generalized sketch. As you can see, the major tectonic plates are Pacific Plate, North American Plate, South American Plate, African Plate, Arabian Plate, Eurasian Plate, Indian-Australian Plate, and Antarctic Plate. There are smaller plates like Nazca Plate, Cocos Plate, Juan de Fuca Plate, Philippines Plate, Caribbean Plate. If you observe this map carefully, you will find arrows pointing the direction in which the plates are moving. This is Pacific Plate, plate entirely under ocean. If you look around, you will observe that almost 
major part of this plate is moving into other plates or we can say other plates are moving into the pacific plate there can be three types of plate boundaries divergent boundary convergent boundary and transform boundary divergent plate boundary is where two lithospheric plates move away from each other the mid atlantic ridge is an example of a divergent plate boundary it is also known as a constructive boundary because new crust is formed at this boundary features that can be associated with divergent boundaries are mid oceanic ridges rift valleys and fissure volcanoes you can see this is a real picture of thingvellir which is in iceland iceland is located on the divergent boundary between north america and eurasia this boundary appears as a crack on iceland some of the most active volcanoes of the world are found at the divergent boundaries volcanoes like krafla loki are present on iceland this is the ridge this is the mid oceanic ridge most of the divergent boundaries are under ocean but some places we can see divergent boundary on the continents the east african rift valley is the best example here the eastern part of africa is getting pulled away from the main land of africa also the arabian peninsula is getting pulled away from the main land of africa which has given rise to the red sea convergent boundary at a convergent boundary lithospheric plates move towards each other the west margins of the south american continent where the oceanic nazca plate is pushed towards and beneath the continental portion of the south american plate is an example of a convergent plate boundary convergent plate boundaries can be of three types first is where an oceanic plate boundary is converging with another oceanic plate boundary when this happens one of the oceanic plate subducts under the other due to the subduction and friction caused due to the subduction a lot of magma is created and it erupts to form volcanic islands japan elusian islands are examples of such volcanic islands as an oceanic an oceanic oceanic plate converges with another oceanic plate both plates bend downwards and form deep ocean valleys known as oceanic trenches you can see in this diagram two oceanic plates are converging one plate is subducting under the other the friction causes heat melts the plate and this magma erupts forming an island arc another type of uh, convergent plate boundary is where an oceanic plate converges with a continental plate the best example is nazca plate converging with the south american plate such convergence causes the oceanic plate to subduct beneath the continental plate thereby melting the oceanic plate and causing formation of magma which erupts over the continental crust 
well this collision also creates deep sea trenches along with that the continental crust boundary is bent and it gives rise to fold mountains the andes mountains are mountains formed due to collision of an oceanic plate with a continental plate you can see the same in this diagram oceanic continental collisions sustain most volcanic activity around the pacific ocean and therefore it is known as the pacific ring of fire the third type of convergent boundary is where a continental plate converges with another continental plate since both these plates are thick one subducts under the other here one of the continental plate which is generally the one which is less dense subducts under the other plate this results into formation of very high fold mountains between these two continental blocks himalayas alps appalachians are examples of mountains formed due to continental continental convergence interesting thing is despite the fact that there is subduction happening at the continental continental convergence there is no magma that erupts due to the thickness of the continental crust so magma remains buried deep within the crust collision of india with asia is the best example of continental continental convergence it has given rise to the highest mountain range of this world convergent plate boundaries are also known as destructive boundaries since the crust is getting destroyed at this plate boundary the third type of plate boundary is transform plate boundary here two plates simply slide past each other along the fault rubbing and scraping material from each other as they move the san andreas fault is the best example where the north american plate is sliding past the juandi fuca plate such areas are prone to frequent earthquakes and some volcanic action since all the volcanic activities happen along the plate boundaries it is obviously not possible for magma to erupt within the plates well that th that thinking is not correct we have certain spots within the plate boundaries which experience volcanic eruptions such spots are known as hot spots it is caused by rising plume of mantle material which is believed to be a result of concentration of radioactive elements in mantle the intense heat of this magma allows it to breach through the crust and erupt on the surface as plate moves there is a chain of volcanic islands formed above the hot spot the hawaii islands are examples of such hot spots we have a number of hot spots present all across the world some of these are on the oceanic crust while the others are on the continental crust this was all for this session in the next session we will focus on the next chapter that is intraplate movements don't forget to watch thank you